Hello everyone, this is the second part in my little series here for um, modding Unity games using Melon Loader. And if you haven't seen the first part, I recommend going watching that. You can see how I set everything up. There'll be a little I card at the top right here. Uh, just click on that. Uh, but once you've watched that, uh, let's get started. So this, um, this tutorial, I'll be diving into uh, editing variables within the game. So like stats of a player... Or like damage or jump force whatever it doesn't really matter and harmony patches um just to preface really quick i am using rider in this tutorial but in the last one i was using visual studio you can still use visual studio it's fine it'll work just as well this is just a lot easier for me to work with and before we get started another disclaimer um Melnoder is not for hacking unity games it is for modding them so only really do this with single player games and multiplayer games where you it's like a co-op and you're not fighting against another player because it just hacking it it ruins the experience for everyone else and you know, just don't do it you know so with all that out of the way uh, let's just get started so here's all my code from before I, I'll just get rid of this and uh, the first thing we're gonna do to even work with uh, zero harmony is we're gonna want to add a new dependency so you're gonna go up to dependencies add reference add from and then uh, you got to look for your games directory, which I showed in the last video. Just do the exact same method. Um, I'm going to be using this grapply game this time. So you got to look uh, for your Meln Loader folder right here. And then you'll see zeroharmony.dll. Just want to double click that. Uh, so now this is something I didn't really touch on in my last video. And it is um, IL2 CPP games compared to mono games. My game right here, this is a mono game, but IL2, it works a little differently, but everything I do in this video should work just fine. So you don't have to worry about that for now, but maybe later on, we'll start talking about that. Okay, so uh, now I'm gonna show you how to install something very quickly, which will be very helpful later on, and that is Unity Explorer, okay? It is a tool that uh, a lot of modders use, including myself, and it's very helpful to you know, find the ins and outs of the game that you're modding. So you're gonna wanna come to this page, will be, which will be linked in the description. You're gonna click on releases, and then you'll see this huge wall of .zip files, okay? It's gonna be a little intimidating, but here's what you gotta do. You gotta look for the Unity Explorer .melnloader, uh files right here. So they'll be IL2, CPP, and Mono. Okay, so um, the way you're gonna differentiate these two is, um, you're gonna wanna launch your game with Mountain Loader installed. So you'll have Mountain Loader installed from the last tutorial, but once you're launching your game, you can see here game type mono ble bleeding edge. If it says mono bleeding edge, it's uh, a mono game. Um, but if it's an IL2 game, it'll say like IL2, CPP, whatever here. And that's how you're gonna indicate which Unity Explorer version you're gonna wanna install. So because my game is a mono game, you can look for Mountain and install that. So uh, it's just going to install this zip file. You're going to want to click show in folder and then go to your game folder. Um, and this is a little different than just installing a normal mod here. You're going to want to go see these two folders right here. You just want to drag these and then just drag both of them in here. And that's all you have to do, okay? Because there's this user libs folder. It's a little different. But once you've done that, you can launch your game real quick here. And once that's launched, you'll see this cool little UI and it shows you everything that's in the scene. So I'll just start off just showing you this scene right here. There's, it's just the, it's a scene called menu and there's a canvas and it has buttons on it here. Look, options. Oh, wow. I didn't even know this was in the game. I mean, I did cause I made it, but like some things can be hidden like this, um, behind little features here and you, you can just look through it for however long as you want, but, um, I'm just going to be using it to, uh, help us look for different things like methods and variables. So now we can, um, we can close our games here. Um, you want you want to go back to your thing here. You want to go up to your using statements. You should uh, you should see Meln Loader on Unity Engine. We're just gonna want to add uh, using uh, Harmony Lib here. It should autofill here. Uh, so now that you're using Zero Harmony, I'll get into the Harmony patch stuff later. But first, I'm gonna be editing variables. So. Uh, to look for a variable you want to edit, let's um let let's let's see. So, I'm gonna edit the jump force of the player. Okay, so these things can be 
either hard to find or easy to find. It really depends on what you're trying to find. But just follow the trail and you should be able to figure it out. So now that I'm in the scene here, you can see how I'm jumping like this. Uh, I'm going to look for the player. So um, let's see what it would be called. And we can even search up here. We can put player. And then boom, I found the player right here. It's not super helpful but um, because it doesn't show the hierarchy. But you can just look for whatever's here and you can click on it to show all this here. Oops. I just attached to that. Okay. Uh, so now, oh, look, push jumping, player movement. So these are all um, different components here, different scripts. Uh, and you can edit these. So I'll go to player movement most likely because it probably has the jumping. And then these are all the variables. So there's jumping and, oh, look, jump force. So um, now that I know this, uh, if I change this right here, say I put it to 8,000, click apply, and then watch me jump whoa right into the ceiling because i can just edit that variable and then boom it, it changes how the game works so in order to access this in our code is we're gonna want to come to our code here and we'll see this on update class uh let's first just do a, a public oh no we're on the on update we'll just do an if uh, input dot get key down which we had before key code dot uh, let's just do m or no, I think I would have used that. Maybe maybe J. You go dot J. We're gonna search through all the objects in the scene to find the player first. So we'll do game object dot find and then quotes player. So then you can find the player object just in the scene. It's that simple. Uh, but we're gonna want to define this as a variable. So we'll do um, game object player equals game object dot find player. Right. So now uh, we have the player, but say we want to get the specific component for the player movement. We'll go to dependencies. We're gonna have to do this watch closely. Add reference, add from, and then you'll be in this folder that you were before. You're gonna wanna go to your game, and then uh, game underscore data, and then managed, and then you'll find all of this, and you'll find assembly slash C sharp. Now this will also deviate if it's a mono game or a IL2 game. If it's an IL2 game, you're going to go to your main directory, Melon Loader, and then Managed, and then you'll come here instead of the other thing. And you'll have uh, basically what you have here. So we're going to look Managed, uh, Assembly C Sharp. We're going to need that one. And then now that we have that reference, we can actually start referencing components from the game. So we'll put down here uh, Player Movement, and then Player. And then instead of game object defined player, we'll do game object defined player dot get component player movement right here. This is very important. So now we're referencing this component right here. So now while we're doing that, we can return a line and do player dot. And then we have all the variables here. So we'll look for jump force, and then here's a jump force. And then we can set this to whatever we want. So player.jumpforce equals 8,000, all right? And now we're done. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna close our game and then save this, control S, and then control B. And it'll build our solution down here and let's just wait till this finishes. Okay, now that that's finished, we need to look for this directory right here. I uh, can just grab this and then put that there. And actually I can't do that directly. You're gonna have to remove the DLL part. Anyway. Uh, once we're here, we're going to go to back to our main area, then obj debug. It's just a lot easier to find the DLL file here than the other way. Even though you could the other way, it's just you go through a sea of different DLL files. So now you want to open your game directory, all right, and then go to mods, and then just drag over this test mod for tutorial, whatever you named it, to here, and then replace, or you can co copy it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, how this all works, I cover in the last video. You do need to do other stuff, but I did cover that in the last video, so make sure you go watch it if you haven't already. Um, once we've installed the mod, then let's just launch our game now. Okay, so now that we've launched our game, you don't want to automatically click J to start it because there's no player in this scene, right? You're going to want to click play, and then now that there's a player in the scene, uh, I can press J whenever I want and run my code. So first, I'm going to jump, and you can see, oh, I'm jumping at a normal speed or a normal height, and then I'll click J on my keyboard, and then boom, right into the ceiling. It's that simple. 
and that's really fun. You you can edit any variable you want. You can edit the speed of the player. You can edit the health of the player if it's a game where you take damage. Or you could go into the gun class, like the shoot class, and see, oh, this is damage variable. And how much is damaging the enemies? I'll just up it to 5 million, and then boom, I insta-kill everyone. Uh, you can do this with many different things, and it is basically endless. Okay, so now on to the next part of our tutorial, which is Harmony Patches. Now, this is a little more complicated, but it is very, very useful. So the point of a Harmony Patch is basically getting a method that's in the game and either adding code at the start of that method or at the end. So any time that that method is called, it will run your code. So uh, we're going to look for a little method here in... Um, in our game real quick. Let's just launch this up. I don't know why it closed it. And then now that we're in here, we just have all this and I'm going to find something in the player to patch into. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna patch in to this jump um, method right here. And then I'll add my code so that whenever I jump, I actually jump twice, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy this down or just remember it. Then we're going to go back to our code here. Now I'm going to have another uh, thing linked in the description, and it's melonwiki.xyz. And here it's a lot of good melon loader documentation stuff for us. Um, we'll just want to click get started, and then developing melons, and then method patching. Uh, so now that we're here, it's actually very simple, but I, I just want to uh, highlight this for you. So um, we're just going to scroll down until we see this right here. And this is essentially what we want for what we're doing right now. And we will uh, come here, come back to our code. And then we're going to want... Jesus, fuck. Sorry about that interruption. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to want to actually not copy this using Harmony Loop. We're just going to copy that right there. And we're going to scroll past our class right here. And we're just going to add this on. This is actually a new class. So now... Here's the fun part. So we see uh, harmony patch, type of, example, method name, blah, blah, blah. But what we're going to do is we're going to do type of player movement. And then our method name, which is which is just jump. So um, we're going to go back to our code and just do private method jump. All right. So now whenever um, it jumps, it's going to run a specific line of code. But we don't have that set up right now. Uh, we're going to go here and we'll see that we can either do a prefix or a postfix. And a prefix runs your code at the start of the method and then it just keeps going and a postfix runs at the end. So for this specific tutorial here, I'm going to be using postfix. Uh, so now that we have this, we'll just do this here. Now, if this is lighting up, uh, it's, probably, it's because it's private. Uh, let's just change this to public and that will fix it right there. Um, so make sure you just do that if you're just highlighting private. Okay, so now we're going to want to get rid of this whole type of thing. We don't need it. Uh, get rid of that comma too. It's just not really necessary. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just, like I said, I was going to double jump. So I'm going to jump again. But instead of going through like copying this down and then referencing the player and then calling the jump again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in here. We're going to put uh, player movement or whatever this type of is right here and then underscore underscore instance and you can't put anything else here it has to be this or else it will not work <laughs> and then you want to finish out oops you're going to want to finish out this and now uh, what I'm going to do is in order to make myself jump again after jumping is I'm going to set the grounded uh, variable to false so uh, what a grounded variable means is when you jump in a game it has to check if you're grounded on the floor before it'll jump you and i usually have like a grounded variable for that and what i can do is i can just go underscore underscore instance dot grounded equals true so oops texture uh, equals true so now whenever i jump it'll immediately set myself to grounded and then i can immediately jump again meaning i can um double jump so i'm just gonna build this really quick go to my debug go to my grapply Mods, test mod for tutorial, put that in here. Grapply, grapply.exe, and launch this up. Now that this is open, we're going to want to go play. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump and then boom, double jump, triple jump, quadruple jump, bam, 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 bam. I can just go over and over and over again because I am setting my grounded variable to true. So this is really cool because uh, I can patch into private methods, which are usually not accessible with um, as much as public uh, methods are, because you can edit those a little bit easier. But this is why uh, Zero Harmony and Malloader are so cool. So this is going to be the end of this tutorial. Later on, I'll get into a little bit more complicated stuff, like making our own mono behaviors, uh, our own components, and putting them onto objects, stuff like that. And I hope this video helped you make a game whatever you want it to be.